Hey guys, you caught me in a good mood, you see. I just found out that Jacob's Ladder got added onto Netflix. Now, as I'm stuck here in my quarantine bunker, I can't think of a better thing to do than to rewatch one of my favorite psychological thriller movies. Now, the internet machine's taken a little while to boot up just because, well, everyone in the world's on the same website right now. But while it's loading up, why don't I talk about why I like this movie so much? Jacob's Ladder is an Adrian Lyne film made in 1990 that studies the mind of Jacob Singer as his soul moves on to the afterlife. The film's nightmarish and unworldly feel, along with its striking and memorable visuals, has caused the film to become a beloved classic in the eyes of many, myself included. Unworldly. I improv that. Is that a word? Jacob's Ladder achieves the near-impossible task of capturing the true feeling of a dream, similar to the films Suspiria or Eraserhead, but under a much different connotation than those films. Because this is a dream you don't wake up from. While not flawless, the film explores life and death in a way that is both realistically gritty and poetically beautiful. Even if you haven't heard of this film directly, the chances are you've probably seen its legacy somewhere in mainstream media. Basically, it's a really abstract movie about life and death, and I'm really excited to see what new details I pick up on this rewatch. Alright, looks like Netflix is booted up, so let's see, uh, Jacob's Ladder. Alright, uh, it's different cover art, but I guess that's just Netflix for you. Wait, oh no. Oh no. Oh no! And now for something completely different. Jacob's Ladder is an embarrassment of a film made in 2019 that studies the mind of the Hollywood remake machine as it makes absolute fools out of everyone involved. With a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's not exactly a hot take to dislike this movie. <laughs> Why did the second guy bother grabbing him? Why didn't he just stab him in the back before he knew he was even there? I'm not even gonna bother talking about how absolutely abysmal the plot is. It tries really hard to outdo the original in terms of weirdness and spookiness, but it comes off as incredibly forced and comical. There's this really bad twist at the end that makes no sense. They even explain it and it still makes no sense. It's just so ridiculous. The movie is so poorly presented that it becomes almost disorienting to watch. The cinematography was uninspired and mediocre at best, but combined with this editing style, I could barely tell what was going on half the time. Did it just despawn? And how did that scream effect make any sense in the world of the movie? It was almost like it was just there to scare an audience. You see, most films are shot using coverage, which basically means that a director would shoot a scene from multiple different angles and then an editor in post-production would cut those scenes together to get the final product. The idea is that the director has a vision for what the scene is going to look like and then he can assist the editor in post-production and choose where the cuts go. But this is just cutting for the sake of cutting. More ice, more ice. It's honestly hard to talk about this film without bringing up the original, but I think it's fair to compare the two considering they have the same name. The screenplay was written by Jeff Bueller, who also wrote Pet Cemetery and The Grudge. Now, I don't want to get into any spoilers for the original, because I highly recommend that you just go and watch it, but I will just say that this remake is a total misinterpretation of the original material. Now, don't get me wrong, it's good for a remake to differ from the original, but this was just so thematically different that it didn't benefit at all from being a remake rather than its own movie. The lead actors weren't even that terrible, and there was a few ideas that could have been developed into something interesting if there wasn't this constant need to recreate visuals and plot points. Okay, just, you know what, just have a seat right here. There you go. Alright, just relax. I'm gonna go get a nurse, alright? Alright. 
Time for a quiz on Jacob Ladder's storytelling style. That man that he just left the room with actually isn't there. How do you think the movie plays this out? Is it A, Jacob walks back into the room to find it empty, creating legitimate tension and actually creating a scary situation? Or is it B, there's a scary lizard monster that drops down from the ceiling? Cast your votes now! And then it just runs away, so why are we supposed to have any fear or tension towards anything that happens in the movie if there are literally no consequences on the actual characters? The script was apparently written back in 2013, and apparently the director was going to be James Foley, who directed Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed, and also an episode of Twin Peaks, apparently? But then it was replaced by some other guy, because Hollywood, I guess. It seems to me like this whole thing was just a mess from start to finish. Hopefully by now most of you have gotten an idea of why I think this movie is bad and why most people also agree with that. Uh, but that being said, I do want to just talk about uh, some of these reviews that I found in researching this video. Uh, most people, as I said, don't like this movie all that much, uh, including this gentleman who rants for 40 minutes and opens his video with this. However, there are some people that will defend this movie adamantly and say that they loved it. Now, I presented my case for why I think this movie is bad, but at the end of the day, different people are going to like different movies, and I cannot hate on anyone if they enjoyed this movie, because really this just comes down to opinions and things that are just completely subjective to what you find scary or what you find entertaining. and. As a critic, I cannot say that my opinion is objectively correct. That being said, let's look at some of the reviews that gave this movie a 10 out of 10. To all of you old farts that didn't like this remake, here is a review from a young, happy person that isn't old and bitter. I loved it. Mic drop. Okay, but where where's your review? Say, saying you loved it isn't a review, that's just a statement. I guess I guess I'm old and bitter so I can't I'm not allowed to have an opinion. Unfortunately, free speech permits racist trolls to post trash movie reviews in hopes that a fine movie such as Jacob's Ladder 2019 fails. Ah yes, the first amendment back at it again. <laughs> Please ignore the racist trolls. Seek out this movie and see it. It is a gripping, finely acted movie that kept me wondering and thinking what the heck is going on. You know, I was also wondering what the heck was going on, but I think that was more of a negative than a positive. I see two types of bad reviews. Half of them are from critics who are comparing this movie to a movie by the same name. It's not just a movie by the same name, it's not just a coincidence, it's, it's a remake, it's fair to compare it to the original. Their expectations were predetermined simply from seeing this movie. Expectations are always predetermined, that's, that's what the word expectation means. What they're trying to say is that their opinions were predetermined, but I think if they were worried that this movie was going to be bad, their fears were justified upon seeing it. This is a quick little editor's note, I did want to just mention that I do think that this is an actual valid point. Uh, most of the negative reviews that I read were always mentioning the original, and while I do think it is fair to compare it, I think that it's also important uh, to treat it as its own movie and to go in with an open mind. But that being said, I do think that this movie is a prime example of why people are hesitant and less trustful of remakes and sequels and prequels and all that because of these cheap cash grabs of movies. So I just wanted to clarify that I don't think this was actually an awful point, but it still doesn't change anything about the movie being bad. The other half are racists, angry at Jesse Williams and his BET speech and activism, angry that this was a primarily black cast. This movie was phenomenal. A lot of jump scares piecing it together trying to follow the clues. The ending was amazing. 
Don't believe the naysayers. If you can get past any preconceived notions about the other movie and go into it with an open mind, watch it. If you are a racist and hate black people and or Jesse Williams, don't watch it. And certainly don't downvote this robbing people of watching a really great movie. One out of nine people found this helpful. Uh, something else I did want to just clarify uh, really quick, just that they are referring to this BET speech, which happened uh, four years ago or three years uh, before the movie was released. Um, and what they're claiming is that uh, the reason people are negatively reviewing this movie is because they disagree with uh, that actor's politics in, in that speech and that people are still mad at him. But um, I didn't see any uh, reviews mentioning that speech or even that actor by name. In fact, I thought the performances were one of the better parts of the movies they weren't uh good by any means but i didn't think they were even part of the problem really so uh, i did just want to clarify uh that's what they were referring to it wasn't just uh you don't like it because it's black people it's th there was a uh speech that some people uh didn't agree with but i i legitimately didn't see uh anything uh, I did want to clarify, I do like that uh, actor, he was Marcus in Detroit Become Human, and that was the only thing I really knew him from, but just wanted to clarify uh, another, you know, uh, brothies. Uh, I think it goes without saying, but if your argument is that if you don't like the movie, then you are racist, then I think you need to reevaluate your voice as a critic. I mean, different people are going to have different tastes in movies, and that's just how it is. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect movie that everyone's going to like. So I think it should be pointed out that other than the fact that the lead actors were black, it has literally nothing to do with race whatsoever. I mean, it could have been interesting if they incorporated elements of racism into the story to give it a different perspective than the original, but no. Instead, they do this. So, uh, that's about it. Uh, I thought this movie was bad. And I thought it was bad because it was bad. And that's the reason why I thought it was bad. If you disagree, uh, that's perfectly fine. But you're not a very good critic if you call me racist because I didn't like this movie. And, uh, that's about it. Um, I give Jacob's Bladder a 2.5 out of 10. Oh, well. That was disappointing, but at the end of the day, it's just one bad movie, you know? A remake's a remake. They're going to be bad. I mean, that's Hollywood, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> uh, man, well, I thought they added Old Boy onto Google Play, so I guess I'll check that out next. I can't wait to see uh, what new details I know after watching it once, you know, the big twist, so I can't wait to pick up new details on this watch, so uh, let's, let's pull that up now. Oh no! <laughs>